Hey everyone, this is Saito, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a simple aimbot to our Assault Cube ESP. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to revisit our ESP. These variables and these functions don't really have anything to do with ESP. They aren't intrinsic to ESP. They're more like game functions. They should be free-flowing functions that we can access throughout our entire cheat. For that reason, I'm going to introduce a new filter called Assault Cube, and I'm going to move assaultcube.h under it, and I'm going to introduce a new code file called assaultcube.cpp. And I'm going to start moving these variables and these functions into those code files. Now that these variables are now global variables, I'd like to rename them and add a g underline prefix to them to avoid confusion. Due to how header files work, every time you include this file into a CPP file, you're going to end up getting a copy of every single one of these variables. So for example, if throughout your application, you include a salt group that three times, you're going to have three instances of gamemode.h. It's not something you want. C++17 gives us the tool to solve this problem. By simply adding the inline specifier to the start of these variables, we ensure that there is only a single instance of them throughout our entire application. Now, we have to set the project to use C++17. This video is sponsored by Malcor.io. As reverse engineers, we know how critical it is to thoroughly analyze files for potential threats and vulnerabilities. But traditional sandbox solutions can be frustratingly slow, taking several minutes to scan a single file. That's where Malcor comes in. Malcor is an advanced, next-generation sandbox solution built for speed and scale. While other leading tools can take several minutes to analyze a single file, Malcor delivers results in just seconds. Some of Malcor's standout features include advanced static and dynamic analysis, shellcode emulation to unpack obfuscated malware, similarity matching to identify related malware variants, fuzzy hashing or SSD for similarity analysis, dynamic Windows OS emulation, and many, many more. By emulating the target environment directly, Malcor can sandbox files without needing to spin up full virtual machines every time. This method enables Malcor to analyze malware with unparalleled speeds, and capture low-level details other solutions simply miss. They also offer an extensive API that allows you to integrate Malcor into your existing security stack. This makes it easy to automate your analysis workflows and scale your security operations. Want to see Malcor in action? Sign up for a free trial over at malcor.io. Once that's done, I'd like to introduce a new function called init offsets. That'll basically do all these initializations. That'll give us more control over when these are initialized. Now that that's done, we have to call init offsets from our hack thread. So I'm going to introduce two new files, aimbot.h and aimbot.cpp. aimbot.h will have our forward declaration for the aimbot and aimbot.cpp will have our actual implementation. So on a basic level, so on a basic level, an aimbot needs to do three things: target selection, angle calculation, and aim adjustment. So I'm gonna start by angle calculation. It is the very basis of everything we're gonna do in this function, and it is the single most important part of it. So, for the sake of not making this into a 3-hour long video, I'm going to briefly go over what CalcAngle does. 
If you want a more in-depth explanation, you should look at the article linked in the description. So essentially, this function calculates the angles needed to aim from a source position, SRC, to a destination position, or DSD, in 3D space. It uses some trigonometric functions to determine these angles. So for the X angle, it uses arctan2 to find the angle in the horizontal plane, converting it from radians to degrees. For the pitch, it uses arcsine to calculate the vertical angle. This is done by finding the sine of the angle between the horizontal plane and the line to the target, or distance, and then converting it to degrees. Now we can get into target selection. We are going to scan through all the players in the game, and then we calculate the angle to each potential target. And then we select the target that requires the least view angle change from our current aim, or our crosshair. But before we do that, let's actually improve our is enemy function. So what we're going to do is that we're going to combine this with the is team game function. Essentially, in team games, enemies are in different teams, right? In non-team games, everyone except the local player is an enemy. So now that we have improved our isEnemy function, let's go back to our aimbot.cpp. We can now start writing our getBestTarget function. So we already know that we are going to return an entity, right? The name of the function is going to be getBestTarget. And it's not going to take any variables because, and it's not going to take any variables because the entity list is a global variable. So I'm going to first write out the entire function and then I'm going to walk you through the function and tell you what it does. So we first start by initializing our variables. Old distance is set to the max float value and new distance is set to zero. The reason old distance is set to float max is because this is essentially a find the smallest elements in an array kind of algorithm. It's very similar to that implementation. We then loop through all the entities in the game and check if the entity exists and is on a different team than our local player. And then for each valid entity, we calculate the angle to that entity from the local player's position. We determine the angular distance between where the player is currently aiming and where they would need to aim to hit this entity. In other words, how much they need to move their crosshair. And then if this distance is smaller than the old distance, we update old distance with this new smaller value and then we set this entity as a new target. And then after checking all the entities, we return the target with the smallest angular distance. So now that that's done, we can start writing our aimbot. The first thing I'm going to do is binding it to my right click. Let's get our target. Let's get our angles. This will essentially give us where we need to look at to be looking at the target's head. And then we can apply the angles. Let's hit compile. And we actually fail because his enemy should return a value. So if it's null, we want to return false. Compile again. And it worked. Now we're going to have to call the aimbot function from our code. Compile again. And now we can go ahead and test it in Assault Cube. Make sure you're already in a bot game and the correct DLL file is selected. If you hit inject, you can see that the ESV works. And let's test the aimbot. And we can see that it works. Great. And that's it.